Yo, what is up guys? For today, I'm bringing you Destiny 2. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Bastion. Now, I'm going to be explaining how to get the gun and the review itself, what I think about it. But I'm going to be try I'm going to try to judge this gun outside of the puzzle and how I feel about it because if you guys don't know, I pretty much made my feelings clear about how I feel about Bastion and the whole quest around that. If you guys haven't seen the video, <laughs> Oh, this has to be a joke. <laughs> so yeah, I personally did not like the Caverns of Time. I think like all that shit just to get Bastion early, very, very disappointing. And I feel bad for people who actually put their time in for the corridors of time. So yeah, sorry. I I fucking knew. I knew that. I knew Bungie was gonna do some shit. And I know people have been like, oh, but it's the friends along the way we made. I guess, I don't know, man. I'm whatever. So aside from that shit, what do I think about the gun? I actually like it and don't like it at the same time. It's really weird because I think it's a really good gun, but at the same time, why would you use it? So before I start explaining my thought process on that, how do you get the gun, Tony? Okay, okay. So in order for you to get the gun, you're gonna have to go to the Caverns of Time. No, I'm just kidding, you're gonna have to do that because apparently, Saint 14 already has it for you, okay? So I actually, unfortunately, ran the Corridors of Time so I can get this footage and do all this shit, even though it's like, what, Wednesday and I'm finally editing it, now. but whatever. That's neither here nor there. So, gonna go to save 14 you're gonna pick up the quest you're gonna go to the tangled shore to kill five fallen captains or servers now in the beginning of the spawn area you're gonna see either a captain or if you go a little further you'll see a servitor if you go to the beginning of the hollowed layer you'll see i think what is it two captains maybe if i remember correctly if you don't want to do all that shit fight for captains or servitors in the area you can just go to the empty tank loss sector and you'll see a captain and a servitor now the captain you have to kill everything in the room press the button and then the captain will come out but after you kill the captain just dip out and then go back in that's how that's what i did because i didn't want to fight for kills after that you're gonna kill i'm gonna try to say this but i'm gonna have it in the screen as well ex nickus ex nickus that's that's what it seems like i'm saying but it seems wrong Axnickus bound by honor and he is in the empty tank loss sector. there so just run it and right when you get to the part where the drag is fighting the cabal dog i forget what they're called he is right behind you at the top so unfortunately i spoiled it for myself it would have been cool to see him jump down but it was too impatient but kill him and after that you get ready for the annoying part so you're gonna have to kill 30 challenging enemies, complete 10 spider bounties, and eight public events in the Tangled Shore. All of these, if I remember correctly, have to be in the Tangled Shore, except the bounties, obviously. You can do them whenever. But the challenging enemies and the public events, if I remember correctly, are all in Tangled Shore. So you can't do them anywhere else. Now, a few things to note. Just do whatever bounty you really wanna do. If I were you, make sure you have enough ghost fragments as well, so that way you can get the quests or, yeah, so you, you can get the bounties. The really annoying thing is you're going to have to find out where everyone is at. Now, if you don't know all the spider bounties, because I didn't, I just looked up videos and then just went from there. This one honestly took me about like maybe an hour to two hours because I had to do the bounties as well. If you have bounties saved, it's going to kill your time by half because an, an hour of that was just me trying to finish bounties. But challenging enemies is really easy. All you got to do is make a public event heroic and a bunch of them will just start spawning in not only that but if you do heroic public events they count as two instead of one so realistically if you do all heroic public events you only have to do four so be smart don't be a dumbass blueberry that just kills a fucking public event because you're an asshole so yeah that's pretty much the bulk of it because the next one is go to the trapper's cave grave which i'll show you where that is in the screen below and i'll show you where what the item is you're gonna have to find this like glowing thing in that in that uh lost sector from there 
collect it and then you're at the last part which is the hollowed layer memento strike and essentially all this is is the strike but with an extra like mini boss at the end now he might spawn on the left or the right of the map just go and shoot him and kill him that's it that's really it after that you're done like you i've heard a lot of people say don't leave because people can join honestly it's up to you i don't really give a fuck i left i didn't give two shits because at the time of when i did this i was salty as fuck so the last thing in my mind was no let me finish it so people don't have to yeah fuck that we all left so from there go to saint 14 and get the new gun and that's that's really it like i actually didn't mind this quest it was not annoying or anything i just again feel like bastion could have been it could have been introduced better if we had like a mission within corridors of time where we have something better than just like go to the tangled shore and kill stuff you like you know how crazy it is that bungie thought in their infinite wisdom let's make a really fucking crazy puzzle that's taken the longest out of the whole like out of all of destiny's history this has been the longest puzzle this will be the longest puzzle let's just do that and then not change the quest steps i would have loved it if they were like all right guys we're gonna make a small puzzle but then from there we're gonna make a little dungeon for this gun because that would have been better it would have been way more well received because getting bastion after all that questing shit that the people did i can only imagine how fucking like just done they were so that's just my two cents about how the the whole situation was handled i think it was very poorly handled i think all that hype and fucking everything for a gun we knew that was already coming it's not it's not it's not it chief not it so aside from that because i did say i want to judge the game the gun by its own merit what do i feel about the gun i think it's fine i think it's pretty cool but it doesn't add anything for me in pve pvp it's actually pretty good i actually liked it my second time around so traditionally what i end up doing is when i do one of these reviews i get the gun and i try out i try it out for crucible for like three four matches and i know that's not enough time to like really gauge and like find all like like everything about it but i'm i'm a i'm a really like hard believer in like if it, the gun doesn't feel good after four fucking matches, I'm probably not going to like it because that's pretty much how it is for me. Unless I'm completely using the gun wrong. That's how I've always done it. And that's how I will always do it because I'm not going to do like, oh, I need like 50 rounds of 50 matches with this gun to see if I like it or not. Fuck that, dude. You can tell within like two matches, one match, if like you really know your shit. So for me... I kind of wrote this gun off like i was like ah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna use this gun that was like the day of the, when i got this gun i used it yesterday and my opinion did not change but it did improve a little bit so before we start talking about everything in pve and pvp let's look at the perks so saint's fist charge to fire three spreads of kinetic slugs Hammerforge rifling for the increase in range. Liquid coils for the increase in impact damage. Breakthrough, which is a portion of this weapon's damage, or yeah, weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields and composite stock. So, unfortunately, all that hard work that was put in by the PVE players really feels more insulting right now because this gun is actually not that good in PVE. And I know people are going to be telling me, oh, but Tony, you can use this with Shield Disorient or the other Shield perk and it'll be gross. If you guys don't know, Shield Disorient, I think it's the one I'm, th I think I'm thinking about. That one, if you take down shields with that weapon that has Shield Disorient, not Shield Disorient. The one I'm thinking about is Disruption Break. Breaking an enemy's shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. I know a lot of people have been telling me, well, if you get like an every waking moment with disruption break, Bastion would be good. Y yeah, like you're not wrong. That logic is not wrong. But what you're also forgetting is that 
by that logic, why don't you just use something more powerful like Izanagi's? Especially if you have the Catalyst like I do. At that point, your Izanagi's would be doing more damage than a Bastion because Bastion is not a damage dealer. Bastion is not something that people are going to be like, all right, guys, make sure you guys have Bastion on a raid night. Like, that's not happening. I don't know. For me, PvE, it just feels really weak. I don't see any reason to use it. The range is pretty okay like i don't really like it because it's very medium to like close range at least from what i've noticed i have not gotten very much like really high-end kit like really far kills so for me this is a very medium to close range weapon which immediately kind of killed me off from using this game this gun in pvp because i could just be using something that's long range like or a shotgun when i need it instead of like charging and hoping i kill one guy so before we start talking about pvp actually pve i guess it's fine it's not like the greatest pve weapon you could be using literally anything else fucking hell arbalist is better than this for fucking sure but it's fun it's cool i it yeah so now that pve is done let's talk about pvp pvp for me and personally i'm very distraught about this gun on one hand i want to say it's really fucking good it slaps fucking fun it's all this other shit and on the other hand i'm just kind of like it's it's fun don't get me wrong guys it's a lot of fun but you're fighting off a lot of shotgunners a lot of people with like one hit kill shit aside from hunters because they can just kill you from anywhere essentially but you're fighting off shoulder charge titans uh nova bombs or handheld grenade for the warlocks you're fighting off a lot of stuff that can instantly kill you when bashing you have to charge it up so for me that's i think that's where it really falls short if it had more range i would probably like it a lot more but the fact that it's very medium to close range at least from what i've experienced that's why i probably won't use this gun as much like it's a fun gun don't get me wrong i do not want to say it's not because it's a lot of fun especially if you see some of the gameplay i was just fucking laughing i was like this is cool like this is really cool but it really fucking sucks that the pve players put all this time and effort into a puzzle and the best thing that people have to say about that to defend this is like but it's the friends that we made along the way the fuck fuck dumb shit argument is that that's how I know the Destiny community is fucking dumb. I'm sorry, guys. Like, if, if you feel like I'm personally attacking you, don't. It's just that I'm really tired of seeing them defend stuff where it's just like the whole community, like a majority of the community doesn't like it. And then there's those like, it's like 30% of people that just try to defend it. It's like, no, no, it's, it's okay because like it's the friends that we made along the way. Bro, that's, I don't know, man. If you feel that way, then let me know in the comments below. But me personally... The gun itself is fine. PVE is it needs a buff. It needs something. It's not it's not there yet. PVP, it's fine. Don't touch it. Uh I wouldn't be opposed to a range buff because like I said, more op more often than not, I was getting gunned down by a shotgunner because I that's all the range I could do. But if I'm wrong, if it's more range, let me know in the comments below. This is my first initial thoughts on it. Like literally the game the gun just came out for everyone yesterday yesterday and the gun was out for me on monday i think if i remember correctly so let me know what you guys think do you guys actually like bastion let me know in the comments below me personally like i said all this hype for a gun we knew that it was already coming when the potential could have been amazing we could have literally lived a memory of our last battle or whatever i know that brings spoilers but i mean at this point Another story mission would have been dope as fuck or a dungeon or a little dungeon like the Outbreak Prime or the Whispered mission. Like I'm just I would love I would have loved to see something that unique for Bastion, but also at the same time, I would have been disappointed with how weak this gun is because I do think this gun's weak. I think in PvE, it it offers you nothing that any other gun can offer you. Because if people are going to be using, "Oh, you can use that one perk that kills shields and gives you damage." that's not value for for this gun it's a value that it brings to every gun so it's, uh pve not there chief pvp dope fun i liked it so 
yeah let me know what you guys think if you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets linked are in the description below thank you everyone for the constant support i really do appreciate it and other than that i will see you guys later